Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a secret lair? Following in the footsteps of the Mythic Edition, secret lairs are the newest Hasbro exclusive online item, this time being offered in unlimited quantities during their window of availability, with options to purchase either specific selections from the collection or buy it in its entirety. Never before has Wizards of the Coast come this close to literally selling singles to customers. And like the Mythic Edition before it, secret layers are available for direct online purchase only and will not appear in local game stores. This video will examine a multitude of criteria to help determine if this product is right for you. But before we begin, Please note, there are two key issues wrapped up in this product, whether or not it is worth it to you as consumer and the larger implications on game stores and the secondary market now that Wizards of the Coast is fully wetting its toes in the direct sales of singles. For this video, I would like to separate the two issues and focus only on the worth to consumers. The larger implications for the game are are wrought with emotion, and I feel should be contemplated further before responding in kind. So this video will be examining what your consumer dollars are getting you with a purchase of a secret lair, and if it is worth it. What selling singles direct means for the larger ecosystem of Magic the Gathering, and my commentary on it, will wait for another time. Let's begin, shall we? Secret Lair is a reprint product where a varying number of Magic cards have been reprinted featuring new artwork and grouped together due to theme, such as one that is a collection of reprinted goblin cards featuring new artwork, another that is a collection of basic snowlands featuring new artwork, and one that is literally just the card Bitter Blossom featuring new artwork and some matching fairy tokens. As an added bonus, each secret layer contains both a Magic Online and Magic Arena redemption code. This code will redeem the secret layer cards on Magic Online so that you can play with the digital copies of those cards on Magic Online. Magic Arena, which doesn't have these cards on it, will give you instead digital sleeves. While there is likely some resale value on these codes, this video will count them as a nice added throw in and not towards the overall financial value of layers. There are seven total secret layers, each with a different theme and configuration of cards. Each secret layer will only be available for purchase for 24 hours, starting Tuesday, December 3rd, with Bitter Blossom Dreams. Those interested in purchasing all seven secret layers can do so for 24 hours only on Monday, December 2nd. Please note that shipping costs are not included in these prices. The buyer will need to pay additional for shipping. Some international shipping is available, however, many large swaths of the world seem to be omitted omitted, namely Latin and South America. But uh, sorry about that entire continent of customers. So if you were to purchase each of the seven bundles individually, it would cost you $229.93. Purchasing all seven on December 2nd would cost you $199. Thus, if you buy in bulk, essentially, Wizards of the Coast is offering you a discount of $29.94. So before I get into the individual layers and whether each is worth it, let's examine what factors into whether you should buy the entire lot of seven for $199 or instead focus on the individual layers you might be interested in. Since buying all seven in bulk on December 2nd saves you $23.99 and five of the seven layers are $29.99 with the two remaining being $39.99, you are essentially being offered a deal of buy six, get one free? This means that after examining all seven layers, if you feel you are interested in six of them, but not one, it is still better for you to buy the bulk deal on seven as six individually is more or less the same price. In this scenario, you can just hang on to and eventually sell the seventh unwanted layer, further reducing your overall cost for the remaining six that you did want. In fact, I would go so far as to say that up to two layers that you are not 
not interested in is still worth it to go for the bulk purchase as unopened layers are very likely to go up in value, certainly highly unlikely to resale for less than what you are paying for them here. And with a little patience, you can very likely recoup enough money from keeping the five you like and reselling the two that you don't to make it a better overall savings deal than had you just purchased five individually. However, past that point, it is probably best to just buy the individual layers you want, especially if there are only two or three that interest you. This option to purchase them individually or in bulk is actually something that I like quite a lot. Think back to the Mythic Editions. Imagine that instead of having to pay $250 for those handful of Planeswalkers, you could have just paid, say, $29.99 for Jace or Ral Zarek and called it a day. I very much like this structure as it gives more options and thus more power to the customer. Also, unlike Mythic Editions, there is an unlimited supply available since these will be printed to demand. Again, I am omitting all commentary and analysis about the wider implications of this system for the secondary market and local game stores in this video. Purely as a customer, purely from a consumer standpoint, there's only only three real concerns with this system. The first, I feel, is that it is fair to argue that the 24-hour limit is still difficult on the consumer. Since Wizards of the Coast is selling the layers between December 2nd and December 9th, I do not see why all seven layers, plus the option to purchase all seven in bulk, cannot be offered during that entire window. Second, not offering shipping to Latin and South America seems, well, ridiculous. Finally, I think it is rather amusing that this being offered at the holiday time, they cannot guarantee arrival of this product for the holidays. They even say on their website, well, we're going to try, but no promises. Okay, come on, just do the math and figure out when you need to have this sale be finished by in order to guarantee shipping for the holidays, at least in the United States where it's being shipped from, and then have that be the end date. If that means you needed this to complete on November 15th, then maybe you should have bumped forward the sales on this. I know you plan years in advance, so I think that could have been done. But these are all really minor concerns. It seems that Wizards of the Coast has taken what was at first an absolute disastrous foray into online sales and really improved dramatically. But now we need to get to the most important part. Which of these bundles are the best value and which might be right for you? Let's examine each in the order they will be made available for purchase. December 3rd will be the day to order Bitter Blossom Dreams. This layer contains one alternate full art Bitter Blossom, as well as four different fairy rogue tokens, all of which create a panorama. This is a great layer to begin our analysis on, as it is the closest one to just selling a single reprint for $29.99. And while I think it is a nice extra to get four fairy tokens with panorama artwork, it's extremely cool in fact, but let's also be 100% honest here. You are spending $29.99 on a full art Bitter Blossom. As of the filming of this video, Bitter Blossom is currently selling for $35 to $45, depending on edition, with the Ultimate Masters box topper selling for a whopping $95. The cheapest foils of Bitter Blossom are selling for is $50 each. This makes Bitter Blossom dreams rather cut and dry. Question, are you looking to purchase a Bitter Blossom? If so, then the cheapest place to do so is by buying this secret layer. Shipping and handling will of course still be a factor, as too is your preferred artwork. I mean, I happen to really like... Rebecca Gay's Bitter Blossom artwork the best, but we're all gonna have our own preferences. A real big factor in examining a lot of these layers is that personal art preference, because when we're talking about bling, it has to do with you and what you want to represent your deck. With all of this in mind, looking at Bitter Blossom Dreams in isolation, I would grade it at a B. It's a very good layer, but not extraordinarily so. Next, we have Eldraine Wonderland, which is the secret layer being being offered on December 4th. This layer contains one alternate art foil snow-covered land for each basic land type, plains, islands, swamp, mountain, and forest. So it's $29.99 for five basic snow lands. They are not full art, but they are in foil. Why aren't these in full art? 
The Bitter Blossom is full art. The Snowlands in each and every pack of Ultimate Masters are full art. I love this art. It's some of the most beautiful art I've ever seen on a Snowland, in fact. Why not make it full art? More perplexing is the choice to only include one copy of each land. This is where I think Wizards is being very stingy and not properly paying attention to how these cards need to be used by players. No one is playing a deck, be it modern, popper, or commander, with just one snow-covered mountain or island. Most likely, players would need large, multiple copies of these to sufficiently bling out their deck. And at $29.99 for one copy of each, especially if you're looking to just get snow-covered islands or snow-covered mountains for a specific deck, this seems a near impossibility. Currently, snow lands are going for approximately $1 each in the new Modern Horizons full art version, all the way down to the original Ice Age and Cold Snap versions. Price fluctuates a little bit depending on whether it's the forest or the island. Foil copies are indeed a lot more, with the five ranging between five and ten dollars depending on land type. Island, of course, still being the most expensive. If I were purchasing one foil full art of the Modern Horizon Snowlands, it would cost me almost exactly thirty dollars. But even though it is the same price, I feel that this layer is a huge miscalculation. Keep in mind that in non-foil, that $29.99 would get me over thirty Snowlands. And I think this is a really clear example of where Wizards of the Coast needs to ignore the secondary market pricing more and perhaps lean into how players are going to want to use these cards and offer instead a playset of each land at this price instead of only one. While this layer might technically be more or less financially the same as buying on the secondary market, I feel it does not function properly and I'm going to give this layer a D. Players need more than one copy of each snow land. The next layer is Restless in Peace, made available on December 5th. This layer contains three cards. One alternate art Bloodgast, one alternate art Life from the Loam, and one alternate art Golgari Thug. The three cards form a panorama, and again, unlike the Bitter Blossom, are not full art. They also are not foil. I do wish a uniformity had been chosen for these layers. Either make them all foil, or none of them foil, or make them all full art, or none of them full art. Looking at these financially, Bloodgast is currently a $9.50 card, Life from the Loam is about $10 each, and Golgari Thug is only about $1. That means that purchasing all three of these from your local game store would be much less expensive at $20.50. This is really a weird selection of cards and a disappointing value. If you like the art, then it can still be good bling, and it might be worth it to you to spend a few extra dollars to get the artwork you want, but as far as bling is concerned, these are neither full art nor foil, and either way, I don't see how this functions financially. Grade is a D. December 6th is when Seeing Visions will be made available, and wow, finally a version that understands how people play Magic, in that you're getting a full play set of the card here. Seeing Visions is four different alternate art foil serum visions from four different artists. I very much like that you are getting a full playset. I like that a lot, as this is a card most likely played in modern decks where having access to the full playset is necessary. I like, too, the idea of the artworks being linked by theme, but different interpretations done by different artists. It's clever. It's cool. If I liked one of these artworks over the other three, I might even look to trade with people a quick one for one. Hey, I'll give you this version of the artwork for this one. These are not full art, but they are foil. Financially speaking, Serum Visions is a card that currently sells for $2.50 each. So a play set is going to run you about $10. Foils can be purchased for about $5 each, meaning a play set would cost you $20. So again, here I'd much rather go down to my local game store and spend $20 on a play set of foil, older art serum visions. But again, if the artwork speaks to you, then maybe it's worth the extra $10 cash for that bling factor. This one's right at the border, and the reason I'm giving it a C instead of a D is that since Unlike the Restless in Peace set, I at least get a full playset of the card. It adds function, and so, fine, it's a C. Explosion Sound.
sounds is the next layer to be made available, and that will be on December 7th. Explosion Sounds is the largest offering of individual cards yet, as this layer contains five. An alternate Art Goblin Bushwhacker, an alternate Art Goblin Sharpshooter, an alternate Art Goblin King, an alternate Art Goblin Lackey, and an alternate Art Goblin Piledriver. Here the cards are neither full art nor foil. Looking at prices, the Bushwhacker is 90 cents each. Sharpshooter is a $5 card, mostly just played in Commander. Goblin King, $2.50 each. Lackey is the big one here at $9. And finally, Pile Driver is also a $2.50 card. So to buy all five of these individually, I would have to spend $19.90, again falling about $10 short of the $29.99 price. It's wildly different artwork, and maybe that speaks to you. But there's already a lot of wildly different artworks to choose from. Many of these cards have been reprinted multiple times. I feel this is still essentially the same thing in terms of value and function as Restless in Peace, and so I'm going to have to keep the grade there at a D. Kaleidoscope Killers is available on December 8th, and it contains only three cards. A Foil Alternate Art Ur Dragon, a Foil Alternate Art Sliver Overlord, and a Foil Alternate Art Reaper King. The price is increased on this layer to $39.99, and hey, what a crazy coincidence, as it's the most valuable of the seven layers. The Ur Dragon is currently only available at one previous printing, the foil face card from its commander precon, and it sells for about $8 individually. Sliver Overlord's premium deck series foil is, wow, as much as those old premium decks sold for off the shelf, $40 each. I loved that series, I miss it. And the scary popular Reaper King is $11.10 for a non-foil and a whopping $62 for a foil copy. So even if we omit and ignore that the foil Reaper Kings are in the $60 range and we use only the non-foil cost, to buy all three of those cards would cost us $59.99. There's significant financial savings here. But this is also one of the first layers where I really see them leaning in to the bling factor. Unlike Serum Visions and Bitter Blossom, which each have a multitude of alternate arts already available, these three cards have only ever been available previously with one artwork. If you are playing Ur Dragon in Commander, then up until now, you had to play with only the Out of Commander precon box art. Same for Sliver and Reaper King. But with this layer here, you can truly look distinct as you sit down to play Commander with these alternate art foils and simultaneously get a great savings over buying the singles independently. Only need one of these for your one Commander deck? Buy the layer, sell the other two. This right here is what the other secret layers should have been, and it's a clear A. Finally, OMG Kitties is available on December 9th. Containing five cards and two tokens, OMG Kitties contains the following. A foil alternate art Arabo, Roar of the Wild, a foil alternate art Leonin War Leader, a foil alternate art Miri, Weatherlight Duelist, a foil alternate art Quasali Slingers, and a foil alternate art Regal Caracal, as well as two different alternate art cat tokens. Here, again, I wish there had been more uniformity. Why didn't the Goblins layer, which had the same number of regular cards, also contain two token goblins? Would the price have needed to be increased to $39.99 for including those two tokens? Why is OMG Kitty $10 more expensive than the Goblin's Lair. But the worst of it is the financial value. Take a look. Arabo, Roar of the Wild, is apparently not as popular as the Ur Dragon in Commander, as they're selling for only 86 cents each in foil. Leon and War Leader is a weird choice over the actually played Arbiter, and only a dollar each. Miri, Weatherlight Duelist, sees much more play, as she's going for an impressive eight dollars. Quasali Slingers is beyond perplexing as an inclusion, as it's only a 30 cent card, and Regal Caracal is a whopping 40 cents. To buy these five cards would cost about $10. I find this layer stupefying in its inclusions. $39.99? It's an outright fail at $29.99. Final conclusion. Secret Lair series is Wizards of the Coast's first full foray into selling singles direct to players, but many of these layers reveal Wizards' stagnant mindset on reprints. The Secret Lair reprints prints are very cautious, avoiding nearly every in-demand reprint you could think of, and instead looking to test the waters with mild picks. As a 
result, the layers are hit and miss, with only Kaleidoscope Killers being the excellent overall product of the seven. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a comment. For $29.99, what would you put in your layer? What do you think is the limit on reasonable reprints for a $29.99 product like this? Let me know in the comments below. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.